Hi guys, this is Mike, and in this part two of three videos on the Ghost Cube, you are going to learn how to solve this middle layer here. In part one, we I explained how to do the bottom layer here, which you see on top. In the middle layer, much like the Rubik's Cube, there are four centers and four edges. Unlike the Rubik's Cube, it matters how you orient the centers. And that's why I recommended in part one that before you tackle the ghost cube, you either do the Fisher cube or the axis cube, preferably the axis cube, because it will show you the importance of center orientation on an easier puzzle. Okay, I think we're ready to jump right in. The way I like to do this is to orient the centers first and then put the edges in place. Some other videos like to go center edge, center edge, center edge around the cube, which is fine. It's, it's just not how I do it. Uh, before I forget, let me say that the method I use for orienting the centers I learned from another cubing video, I think it was called Super Antonio Vivaldi. And I thought that the way he explained it was, was quite good and I follow his technique. So if you don't follow anything about my Ghost Cube videos, I recommend giving his a try. Maybe you will like his explanations better than mine. Okay, much like the Rubik's Cube, the centers are already in the correct positions always. It's just a matter of putting them in the right place. So once one center is in the right place, all of them will be. So let's bring back our good old yellow solved one and look for one of the, let's look at what we're doing here. We're doing this layer here. So let's look at the edges. This one here is nearly a square. It just has a little chip cut out of it as well as this one here, but here the chip is in another place. There's this one here with a diamond shape and a, and a smaller triangle. And this one over here that looks basically the same. Let me make sure it's not the same piece. Yeah, another diamond shape with a triangle as well. So why don't we start with one of these uh, uh, square pieces with a little chip cut out of it. Let's do this one here where the chip is away from our solved bottom and you will see that it the bottom of it goes over this trapezoid here as well as uh, this triangle with the trapezoid on the left. So let's look for the same place on this one. Yep, right here. So we are going to put the correct square basically where the center is now. And again, the square with the chip in the upper left side. So this might be right, but if we were to orient this 90 degrees um, counterclockwise, then the chip would be on the upper right, not the upper left. So let's look for the other one, which is basically the mirror image. And here it is right here, and it's conveniently already oriented right. So I'm comfortable that this center is in the right place as well as being oriented right. So let's move right along to the next one. So this must be in the right position, but this is not flush. So it means it's, well, I guess if I wiggle it a little bit, it is flush. So, and furthermore, this edge looks right. This is, I don't know, this is just too convenient. Let me mess some of these pieces up so it'll give you a proper demonstration how to solve it. All right, I mixed this up a little bit for the purposes of demonstration. I left this first 
center correct because I don't need to teach you four times the same thing. So next let's look at this one here. How should this one go? Well, let's, let's go back to our solved ghost cube. And so here's that starting correct one. So here's the next one. So the diamond shape is going to, the bottom of the diamond is going to be on the upper left side. So here it is. So we are going to want this diamond, this tip of the diamond here on the upper left side. Currently it's on the upper right side, meaning that we are going to have to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Yeah. Okay. So here's the Vivaldi trick to rotate this. What I'm going to do is first put it in an axis of rotation here, which we didn't have to worry about before, but now we do. So make sure we can even move this. And to, if I were to just rotate this now, it would mess up these three pieces here, which I already did. So I'm going to move these from the upper left to the bottom right, where I, and so I can safely rotate this center here. Okay. So here's the Vivaldi trick. You do up two, right two, one, two. So now those pieces are down here so I can safely move this center. And remember we wanted to move, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise like this. And now reverse that movement that we did before to get these here. So right to and up to. And let's check. So let's shift this back so it's flush. And let's check this one. Yeah, this is nice and flush. And furthermore, this edge is nice and straight. And yeah, so I'm satisfied we did this center right. So next, let's move on to this center. And look, it looks like coincidentally this correct edge got put in the correct place too. All right, here is the next corner. We could either guess at this if we want, or we could look again at our solved one. So here was the first center we did. Here's the second. So here's the third with the little chip in the lower left side. Okay. So correct, correct. Here we go. Okay, so it's currently it's on the lower right side. So to get it on the lower left side, we would rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So again, we're going to do the, the Vivaldi trick. So first put this in an axis of rotation, then move these three down here, up two, down two, I mean right two. And then we rotate our center 90 degrees clockwise this time. and then move this back. Right to, up to. And let's check it. First we have to make sure things are flush. So there we go, flush, flush. And yeah, this, it looks a little weird, but, and there's not much to check it with, just this tiny little chip here, but that seems flush and this seems flush with this little tiny piece here. Again, if it weren't for the, the solved ghost cube, I would be skeptical, but yeah, this feels right to me. So um, it should be just one more done, but this one looks right. Yeah, let's check our, um, our solved one. And yeah, again, with this one, the diamond, the tip of the diamond should be on the lower left as it is here. And if we position it just right, it seems flush. So there are our corners. Uh, coincidentally, two of them were already solved, but we went through two of the other ones. So I, d I think I don't really need to do that same procedure Again, you can always, as with any of these videos, go back and re-watch 
anything you want as much as you like. I give you permission. So yeah, next we're now we're ready to go on to the middle edges. So let me take a little break. Okay guys, let's move on to the middle edges. Uh, why don't we start by looking at what we're going to be doing on the solved ghost cube. So here is our solved middle layer. And here are the edges. Here's one that is a six-sided funky looking shape with a little triangle and a big triangle. The next one, this looks like the state of Nevada, but the mirror image of it with a big triangle there. Here's another similar one to the first one, a funky six-sided shape, little triangle, big triangle. And here's another Nevada shape with a triangle. So, yeah, let's, st let's just start with the, the corner that we started with last time, the square with the little chip out of the top left, and then put this piece in here with, a, with the, um, the state of Nevada on the right side. If it is already on the top. If it's not, then I'll probably do something else to save time. So here, here's that square with the, with the chip in the upper left. So let's look for a Nevada piece. And okay, up on the top here we have a rectangle, funky, funky, and a trapezoid. So there's only one piece that belongs on the middle layer that's on top. It's one of these funky ones. So let's, I know there's a funky one that goes to the left of this one here. So let's see if it fits. There's just a 50% chance. So let's bring it right above that square piece. Here we go. So there's a 50% chance that it goes right here. And if I swing it down, it may not be oriented right. Okay, this looks, this looks right. Because I know the centers are, are already correct, and when I swing this down, this is nice and flush with that, and that's flush with that. And this edge here seems nice and straight. So, yeah. So let's put it there, and you should know this algorithm from the Rubik's Cube, but we are going to swing this, which is in our top center facing us, down to the left side here. So we do this. Ready? Up prime, left prime, up, left, up, front, up prime, eh. front prime. So hope I did that right. Let's see. Yep, this looks good. So that's flush and that's flush. So that's right. Okay, let's look for another piece. Hopefully that kicked out a piece we need to do on the middle layer to the top. And it did. So here's the other funky piece. Uh, so let's, let's just, um, let's, let's test it here. Nope. That seems kind of flush, but you can see there's a chip here and not, yeah, so that's not right. So I already checked that it doesn't belong in this position. Let's check if it belongs here, which I think it does. Okay, that's not flush, so it may belong there, but not in that position. So let's try this way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's flush, and that's flush. So, I, so this should go here. So let's bring it back to the top, and again, we're going to bring it to the left side. So we we'll repeat that algorithm I just did. Upper prime. Mm. Sorry, okay. Upper prime, left prime, upper, left, 
upper front, upper prime, front prime. And yeah, this looks good. Everything here looks nice and flush, as does this one here. So now we just need to work on those two pieces with the Nevada shape. So here's one of them here, but it's obviously not right. And, and here's the other one. So we've got one on top. So let's just um, test for a good fit. What do you know? Our first test seems to work. So I bring that down that way. Yeah, so again, we're bringing it to the left. So let's do that same algorithm again. Upper prime, left prime, upper, left, upper, front, upper prime, front prime. And let's, let's check it. And where did we put it? Yeah, right here. So this is flush and that's flush. So yeah, three down, one to go. And okay, here is our other Nevada shape piece. So we obviously need to put it in this position, but it obviously isn't oriented right here. So we need to bring it up to the top to flip it. So we could bring it up to the top two ways. Um, I'll do it the with the other algorithm because I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to just shift any piece on the top down to here to kick this one out. So shifting going from the top to the right side, you do up, right, upper prime, right prime, upper prime, front prime, upper front. And now let's reevaluate. And yeah, that seems to have kicked this uh, funky piece, a different funky, funky piece. I shouldn't have used that term. This kind of five-sided piece here with a chip coming out down to the bottom. But the important thing is that we got our Nevada shaped piece up to the top. So let's swing it down this way to see if it works. Yeah, it seems flush. So we need to bring that down to the right side. So again, repeat that same algorithm. Upper, right, upper prime, right prime, upper prime, front prime, upper front. And reevaluate. And okay, so let's check our whole middle layer here. Everything looks good to me. So flush, 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 flush. So I am pretty satisfied this is correct. And with that, we have solved our middle layer and we are ready to go on to part three, the solving of the top layer. So thanks guys for watching. This video was brought to you by my website, wizardofodds.com, which is all about the mathematics of casino games. And I shall see you over in part three. Thanks for watching. Bye.